everybody, welcome back to another great episode of Beyond the Tap. And uh, you'll notice I'm by myself today. That's all right. So we're going to have a great time. Uh, we had Dara with us last time, and uh, we got some great other guests coming up uh, that are going to be helping me host here. But uh, I think for today, the only person we need to have in the house with me, uh, we have uh, Boston Mountain Brewing. And uh, welcome to the show, one of the co-founders, Matt. Uh, Matt, say hi to everybody. How you doing, man? Hey, everybody. I'm hey. doing well. Thanks so much for joining us, man. This Thanks has been kind of a long time in the the making, right? Yeah, absolutely. It seems like I met you guys, what, about eight months ago or something like that, and uh, it's been a rough trip since then, but I made it. It's, it's nothing like going through a pandemic, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just kind of... We kind of just make our way and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So, I mean, let's let's start there, man. I mean, you guys are located in Fayetteville, right? That's right. Yep. So you're in Fayetteville. Phil, ah, Fayetteville. Woo, y'all. <laughs> I haven't even had anything to drink yet, and we're already going there. So uh, it's going to be a fun show. But uh, you're in Fayetteville. You're off the square, right? Uh, you're like kind of off of, uh, was it Greg? Yeah, we're on the corner of Township and Greg there yeah. in Fayetteville. Yeah, so I mean, I know there's quite a few breweries around. There's quite a few different locations, but man, I tell you what, you guys got a, a good little corner there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So basically, how has the pandemic been for y'all? I mean, oh man, it's been rough. I think it's probably been rough for everybody. Um, you know, we got shut down for everything, but to go sales in March. Yeah. And uh, March through May was really terrible, but uh, we're slowly climbing back up. We're adding on to our to go menu quite a bit and uh, seeing how that'll take us. So, yeah. yeah. So now take us back really quick. I mean, you guys have been open for a while now, right? I mean, quite quite a while. It'll so. be a year and a half next month. Yeah. Okay. All right. And where'd you guys, have you always been at this location that you're at right now? Yeah, that's our first location. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, Sam Grincieri, we started uh, Boston Mountain Brewing as a kind of a home brewing uh, gig between me and him, and uh, it just kind of blew up on us. And we opened in June of 2019 over there at the location that we're at right now in Township and Greg. That's awesome, man. So, I mean, you guys, you guys started growing. You kind of obviously gained a good following, and then pandemic hits. Um, how was it, I guess, uh, it was really cool to see our local legislation really, you know, open up that to go sales and things like that more. And then did you guys jump on the delivery train at all? No, we didn't get into the delivery a whole lot. We didn't have any real good viable, uh, transportation to do that at the time. And it being a new brewery, we didn't have a lot to invest into that either, but we, uh, tried to gear up our to go, you know, we got into bottling, we expanded our growler selection and uh, we're just kind of going from there as much as we can now oh, that's awesome man that's i'm glad that you guys made it through and it seems like things are trending upward now they're but, definitely trending upward yeah we we probably had a low of around 10 percent of sales uh compared to you know the few months that we were open and now we're back up to around 60 percent probably okay all yeah. right so if, if you're listening to this make sure and check out boston mountain brewing so then that way uh you can help them get back up to 70 80 90 and more so uh absolutely i'll tell you what man it, it takes a true village right yeah absolutely so. yeah i mean we couldn't do it without uh, the community that we're kind of immersed in over there in fayetteville they've been extremely uh supportive and uh, even you know we got a lot of tourism even with the covid going on we're getting a lot of visitors from texas missouri you know it's become a, quite a culture i guess you could say yeah, yeah. absolutely so Tell me how you got started. You mentioned home brewing a while ago. Did you start out, obviously, as a home brewer? Yeah, we both started out as a home brewer. My partner, Sam, is from uh, San Diego, so he was uh, really immersed in that culture early on. Uh, I think they have somewhere around 350 breweries out there in San Diego right now. And uh, I was going to the University of Arkansas when I met him, taking uh, environmental science. And so I was taking a lot of chemistry, microbiology, that kind of stuff. And we would sit and we would chat at work. We worked together. And it ended up being that he wanted to start home brewing and he wanted me to help him learn how to do it. And so we both kind of just uh, started in uh, my mom's kitchen at the time. We would take over her kitchen and brew every Saturday, I think it was, and uh, did that for quite a while, about three years, I think, together and uh, until it kind of started blowing up on us. People started wanting to buy the beer. So 
Yeah. yeah. Now, did you guys start out with any kits or anything, or was it straight? Uh, no, we went hardcore straight out. We uh, built our own system. Uh, I did a lot of research on all grain brewing and built a little mash tun out of an igloo cooler and bought a boil kettle and went crazy. Started adding stuff on as we went. You know, got a plate chiller a, a few months in and things like that. But yeah, we just went kind of full bore right at the start. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Any uh, any good, uh, what's the best tip I think you, or that you think you learned along the way? Oh, I mean, there's so many of them. I would say if you do get into home brewing, be prepared to uh, let it kind of consume your life. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I mean, you'll end up spending thousands of dollars on equipment before you know it if you get really serious and really like it, so... Just yeah. be prepared for that investment, I guess. I feel like any good hobby is going to take your attention and your money, right? Absolutely. I mean, you got to, whether it's beer or cars or anything. Yeah, but it's worth it, man. I mean, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Absolutely. So yeah. when did the idea come around of just like, hey, uh, we should take this bigger? I mean, were friends coming after you and being like, hey, dude, I need some more of whatever you just made there? Or That's a, pretty much what happened. Uh, you know, me and Sam were both working at the Walton Art Center when we met and uh, we got in pretty good with some of the folks around there. And when they found out that we were brewing and thinking about opening a brewery, they started letting us take a few uh kegs over there to their events and serving them over there and it just kind of blew up we had people coming up wanting to buy it and take it home with us and we couldn't you know we called uh abc and discussed it with them to see if there was any way to sell homebrew and of course there's not you have to have a brewery license so we said well let's let's open a brewery here we go right yeah <laughs> so so then you guys said uh, what led to being there at that location was just available space at the time and, and you just had that good connection or, or, you know, found it or. It was kind of a combination of things. I would say, uh, we were kind of in a hurry, you know, uh, Sam's dad is our main investor and he wanted to get on the ball. We started putting paperwork together in January and, uh, started looking around at first we wanted to buy a location, but that was, uh, prohibitive in cost you know commercial real estate's pretty high and so we just started looking around and looking for available we wanted good parking we wanted a large space that we could kind of have the brewery and the tap room at the same time and that and we wanted a central location and this one just really seemed like the right fit as soon as i walked in and saw it i knew that that was our location i think that's awesome man i mean uh, tell me like how big is your uh how big is your space there it's a little over three thousand square foot we separated it off uh, i think the brewery proper is about eight or nine hundred square foot and then the tap room and we have some storage that makes up the rest of it very cool what's your capacity i mean how many people uh with without pandemic uh restrictions what's your total capacity of the total capacity was 88 with no restrictions okay and what are you guys sitting at around right now we're looking well we're at 60 percent of that so it's about what is that about 55 or something like that. okay yeah. all right so in november of 2020 you're back you're back about 60 percent of it which yeah. is good yeah um and hopefully we'll figure this all out soon i hope so and uh we just you know we had an election pass so you know hopefully some new stuff will start turning and and we'll get some uh some relief going for this coronavirus i'm sure we're gonna uh, do some changes <laughs> we'll just say that Oh, yeah. So let's talk more about your beers here. I mean, we've okay. got one beer in front of us. Uh -huh. uh, which one is this? I, I read, is it Golden? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, that's right. This is our Golden Ale. This is uh, kind of our flagship beer, I guess. It's our most popular seller anyway. So, okay. Yeah. Was Now, was this a homebrew originally? This is originally a homebrew. This is, I tell everybody, this is my baby. This is kind of one of our first recipes, and I probably brewed this one a dozen times and yeah. tweaked it each time, trying to get it exactly where I want it. Well, I'll tell you what, now it, the flavor on this one is really crisp, Thanks. really fresh. I mean, I love, that's, uh, as we've said on this show before, uh, it's crushable. You know, it's something that's easy to take to the lake. It's something easy to sit around on a porch and drink. It's easy to take out to a little friendly gathering. Um, and you name it, it's, it's a perfect beer, man. I tell you, that's, that's a really tasty beer. Well, thank you very much. That's kind of what I was going for. I wanted a nice summer beer that you could drink all day long if you wanted to. And yeah. uh, I like the malty bready flavor. So that's what I was trying to get into it. And then I'm about there. I'm going to keep tweaking it. I'm, I'm noticing just a little bit of citrus. Is that the hops that you use? That'll be the one? hops. Yep. Yeah. A little bit. Very uh -huh. cool. Very cool, man. I mean, I, it, the color on this one's great. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're watching our YouTube channel, it's got just a little haze to it. 
Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, that's that beautiful. Great it's, clarity on that, man. It's generally crystal clear, but this was a new batch and it hasn't completely cleared out yet. So, yeah. Yeah. So now on the the rest of your beers here, I know there's there's six here that we have. Um, how many beers do you keep on tap in the in your tap room most times? We have twelve taps, and one of those is usually occupied by a black apple cider. Okay. Um, okay. So we keep eleven of our own rotating in and out. The gold stays on most of the time, uh, and there's a couple others that people really like that we keep around. But I would say we rotate in and out around eight of them most oh, of wow. the time. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really impressive. I know. Uh, uh, we had a, an episode recently where they were talking about they had uh, they had ten taps and it was uh, about half of them actually now up to about seven I think are kind of locked in as as local <laughs> favorites and they said man we we have to keep these on tap all the time but to see that many uh, on a constant rotation man that that's really cool because I, I would imagine that keeps you pretty innovative right with absolutely your flavors. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of a delicate balance because you do want to keep the ones on there that are crowd favorites. But uh, another uh, suggestion that I get quite often is to rotate in and out and have new beers. And I think that's what people are looking for a lot of the time. So yeah. I, I bring the crowd favorites back. If I do happen to rotate them out, I'll bring them back in a few months. But I try to keep as much new stuff coming out. And, you know, and my goal moving forward after, you know, with the pandemic is, uh, it's kind of reworked the model that I'm going for, and I want to try to have a, at least one to maybe two releases a month from here yeah. on out. Yeah. Do you ever uh, do you ever try to take a uh, take a beer off the rotation and then uh, suddenly bring it back, but it, maybe sneak sneak it in under a different name? Absolutely, and Make that's a uh, you know, I mean, that's uh, I don't know that I would sneak it in under a new name, but I do take them off and kind of hold them back and let them age for a while just to see if that flavor profile changes over time. And then I'll bring them back if I'm happy with what it's done. So, yeah. Yeah. Now that's great, man. What's, what's one of the craziest beers you've ever tried as far as like from a flavoring? Oh, um, well, I've got an IPA going on right now and I've got several different hops. I've got, I think six to seven different hops that I'm putting into that one. They're really? all. Really? Yeah, they're all tropical fruit, like New Zealand, uh, Australia type hops, and so that that may be the craziest that I've tried so far. Just trying to get all those hop flavors to kind of blend together and still be drinkable. So yeah, yeah. No, I mean for our for our viewers and listeners, uh, what explain really quick? You know, you mentioned like tropical fruit mm-hmm. uh, notes and things like that. Um, where do those Where do those hops come from, or what are they called? So. Uh, well, the Pacifica hop is one of the ones that I'm getting from New Zealand right now, and it's known, it's actually, uh, they call it the uh, Hallertau of New Zealand, so it's got a little bit of spicy hops or notes in there as well, um, but uh, the tropical fruit, you know, especially the tropical fruit seem to come from the New Zealand and Australia areas, uh, you know, I mean, you can also get a lot of citrus out of uh, U.S., you know, Citra is a U.S. hop, and that's extremely popular for a lot of West Coast IPAs and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. Have you ever made a bad beer? You just like, brew oh it yeah, up and you're like, oh, this is crap. Throw Absolutely. It away. Uh, last year we brewed a beer. It was an IPA that we got some experimental hops that were coming out of California. I think they were. It didn't even have a name, and we just went full bore. We did a smash, and we said, well, we're gonna see what it comes out as, and. That's the only beer that I've ever put on tap that I had returns. People bringing it up and say they couldn't drink oh, wow. it. Oh so, wow! Yeah, and I knew that when I put it on, I wasn't too happy with it, so I ended up pulling it later on. But uh, yeah, that was definitely a bad beer. Call that beer the nope. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so tell me a little bit more about your brewing over there. I mean, how big of a system do you guys run? We got three barrel system. We got eight fermenters that we're running pretty much all the time. You know, that's how we're able to keep the 12 taps full. It's small batch, you know, it's 110 gallons of batch. That sounds like a lot, but compared to some of the other breweries around here, it's still pretty small. Yeah. But it allows me to, you know, I can, with eight fermenters, I can pull them out and brew a new one pretty easily yeah and, uh, i'm limited only really by storage capacity right now okay so, yeah now you mentioned bottling obviously we have that here do you do any cans or anything too or is it just bottling at this point? just bottling right now when uh pandemic hit and we were only allowed to sell to goes we decided that we wanted to get into either bottling or canning and uh, we were going through a can shortage at the time and everybody that i was contacting was saying that i needed to buy an entire semi truck load of cans in order to get into the canning business whereas yeah. i can buy 600 bottles and and uh you know it was just more 
it made more sense cost wise at the time. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. And then, do you do any kegging or anything at this time? Or we do. It, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, I don't know if you noticed or not, we have our friend over here at Uptown Kitchen and Tap House. We got Seth. And, right. Uh, you know, so are are you are you in his tap room yet? No, we're not in anybody's tap room right now. We had six or seven different accounts before the pandemic hit, and everybody canceled when that happened. Beer sales just dropped off for everybody. But I think uh, I'm going to start putting feelers back out. And anybody that's listening to this and is interested in uh, getting our beer on their tap, just give me a holler and we'll work something out. I'm sure Seth's like 40 feet away from me right now going, mm-hmm, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So you might have to chat with him, but no, All that's right. exciting, man. So um, is there any certain style of beer that you guys tend to lean towards? I mean, I know some folks go for European styles or they go for darker beers or fruitier beers, but is there any certain genre or, or class of beer that you guys go for? We're pretty much all over the board. We're uh, pretty di- diverse in our own taste preferences. Um, like I'm a light beer or a dark beer drinker. I kind of rotate back and forth depending on my mood mostly. Sam likes the west coast ipas and pale ales and so uh we're just continually experimenting and trying to put out as much variety as we possibly can just to see what people like and what sells the best yeah yeah what's the uh what's what's a favorite beer that you've ever made uh i think this coconut porter that i brought in today is probably my favorite so far yeah we'll have to hit that in the second half here i know uh we popped the top on what was it your cold yeah and that's a really good one dude that's probably in second place for me okay all right yeah we'll have to try that out because i've i've had a couple of coconut style you know coconut infused beers you know Uh before and uh one of them really liked another one i didn't really like sure yeah you know I'll, i'll I'm looking forward to seeing that one. All right. So, uh, and then you know, would you say that uh, the golden you said is is your best seller? It's is definitely that? probably sells outsells everything else by about fifty percent. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. And then, I mean, what's uh, what do you guys do? Do you do trivia nights there or anything? We the- were doing trivia before pandemic again. That's okay. really set us back. You can't have the large groups. We've been experimenting a little bit lately. We've been doing uh, cookouts, and we did burgers last week. We do wings. We do like uh, ninety nine cent wings sometimes, and uh, we're thinking about doing a rib night. So we're kind of experimenting with food because that brings people in uh, in a trickle kind of. You know, yeah. it doesn't fill the tap room up to where everybody's nervous to be around each other so now is that your own food that you guys cook there on site or is that someone else for the most part we either prep it at home and bring it in or we cook it there on site yeah that's awesome man that's Uh, very cool i mean i'll tell you with especially the food scene around here you guys got a lot of good opportunity to to bring some folks in for that it's been really popular so far we're really happy with the response we've gotten absolutely yeah now um and then you know how often do you guys release new beers you said it's pretty frequently, right? I mean, well, you know, the last since we've opened, I've been trying to find the flow and how often I can release beers. And my rule of thumb originally was to wait until a batch sold completely out and then I would replace it. And now I'm starting to think that I'll probably go like because I get six kegs out of one fermenter and I'm thinking maybe I'll do like three kegs and then switch out with something new because people like to see new stuff and I like to make new stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you can take those, you could set those back and see how they age a little exactly. bit more, right? Or distribute them to people that are interested. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, very cool. Well, again, I mean, the, the golden here is delicious. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off because I'm excited for a Kolsch. A Kolsch is one of my favorite styles of beer to have. And so, uh, yeah, I think you'd be happy with the Kolsch. Out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So tell me, uh, what's the difference here? Uh, what is, I'll say, what's the difference between a golden, for our listeners and our viewers, uh, the difference between a golden and a Kolsch? Okay, so, a, and I, I'm hoping I'm going to get this right. Uh, the golden is an ale, strictly, so it's brewed with ale yeast. It's uh, top fermenting, as are most beers that aren't lagers or pilsners. Um, the Kolsch itself is brewed with a lager yeast, but it is top fermented. It's brewed at a slightly higher temperature than you would as a lager. So this one's going to, this is a, a beer that originated in Germany in Cologne. Um, and technically you're not supposed to call it Kolsch unless it's brewed there. It's kind of a strict thing that they got going on over there, but this is my Kolsch knockoff. I got online, I researched how they made it, I even pulled up a water report from Cologne itself and tried to mimic that as closely as I possibly could. How do you go about that? 
Just uh, the internet, man. I mean, it's an amazing thing. You well, just type in a uh, water report for the city of Cologne, and you well, yeah, can... but how how do you imitate that? I mean, what's what's oh, what goes I, that I look at certain minerals that are contained within the water there in Cologne. Um, mostly, uh, you're looking at like uh, sulfates and uh, uh, chlorine content, things like that, sodium content. Okay, and you just kind of try to you get the parts per million that are inherent in that native water and you strip your water out and add chemicals back in that to closely mimic it now i gotta say i mean out of all of the breweries that we've had on this show you are the first person that i've actually heard say that they they try to imitate the water of the local region where it is uh where it's originally brewed or in this case like you said it's it's supposed to be from there to be called a kolsch but why why go that extra mile like what's what is it to to you i mean obviously authenticity i think is a huge i would imagine is a huge thing for you i'm not going to put words in your mouth but right. i mean what's what's the purpose of uh of going that extra mile for it i mean i want to create the best beer that i possibly can and uh, the kolsch is kind of a pretentious beer and that you know they went to war in i think the late 80s or early 90s to make the kolsch a trademark of that region of germany and so to give it proper tribute i wanted to make it as closely as what they make it over there man that is really cool again that's you're the first person that i've had on this show that's actually said they went that that extra mile a lot of folks you know they'll they'll use specifically uh refined water you know of some form whether it's a you know, purified a certain way or filtered a certain way or whatever. But, uh, but to hear that you guys at Boston Mountain Goat that high above and beyond to just make sure and try to imitate the water report. All right. That's impressive, man. That's really impressive. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here. Okay. I'm going to try this out really quick. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. So I am, like I said, a huge fan of Kolsch beers, and uh, that one is delicious. Excellent. Uh, very, it's very soft, actually, uh-huh. and like the like thinking about the just the mouth feel of it and everything. Okay. I mean, that's what I that's what I immediately get. It just it's just a very comfortable beer to drink. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I know that the side the water the softness is an aspect of the water over there. So yeah, yeah. Man, that's incredible. And I've never been to Germany. I would like to go one of these days to see how it stacks up. So, Well, someone get this man to Germany, please, because <laughs> uh, I tell you what, he's got to be able to take his Kolsch over and, and kind of be like, hey, how do we uh, how do we measure up here? You yeah. know, get some of their take on it. I would imagine that would be pretty big. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, now, really quick, let's talk uh, about, I mean, thinking about this uh, and, and how you do go so far above and beyond uh, to make it special – uh, have you entered this or any of your beers in any competitions or anything like that? No, I've still uh, yet to enter any competitions, uh, and I don't really know why. Most Well, I mean, I was thinking about the, uh, what was the one we just had, the uh, national beer competition here in, in North America. Yeah. And See, I thought about doing that, but uh, shipping the beer, I brew all my beer cold, I store it cold, and I'm a little concerned about how it would ship. So that's the only thing, really, that has stopped me from entering a whole lot of competitions. Yeah, I would think you'd almost need to, like, uh, maybe crowler it or something like that, and then ship it, you know, packed in dry ice or something. Maybe, I mean, yeah, I'm going to have to figure that all out. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to entering some competitions, and I'm not opposed to it. It's just a matter of logistics, really, that I've been trying to sort through. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I know you said, you know, you opened last June, right, in, right. of 2019. Yeah. Um, so so how, I mean, have you been at, obviously, like Fayetteville Foam Fest and things like that? Are you involved with that at all? Or We were not in the Foam Fest, but we did make it to Frost Fest last year. Frost Fest, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, very cool. Well, I look forward to chatting more about this. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'll, I'm going to you know slide this down to you here in a second, and you can you can enjoy some of this as well. Okay. But uh, let's take a break for advertisers here, and uh, we will come back in just a few minutes. I know it's already been 25 minutes on us here, so uh, that's, that's crazy. Quick. But yeah. uh, we will be back here shortly, and hear some more from Boston Mountain Brewing and Matt. Man, thanks again for joining me here. Thanks a lot. We'll catch y'all soon. Hey everyone, it's Brian here, and I'm so excited to tell you about the all-new 2021 American V-Twin models from Indian Motorcycle. Now, if you haven't heard of Indian, they're America's very first motorcycle company, and autumn here in the Ozarks, it's the perfect time to take one out for a test ride. I've been by the dealership, I've seen what quality craftsmanship looks like, and you should too. 
I'm telling you, the new 2021 models are incredible. They've got the Scout and Scout 60, or if you're like me and you like a little more stripped down, more blacked out look to it, you'll wanna check out their Scout Bobber and Scout Bobber 60. They've even got the liquid cooled Indian Challenger, which if you didn't know, was named 2020 Motorcycle of the Year by both Rider Magazine and Thunder Press. So head over to Heritage Indian Motorcycle in Rogers, Arkansas today to schedule a test ride or check them out online at heritageindiannwa.com or call 479-633-8443. And remember, always wear your helmet, never drink and ride, and be sure to follow all local laws, including any social distancing guidelines in your area. All right, so if you like what you're hearing here on Beyond the Tap, make sure and head over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to us. Hit that little bell so you make sure and get the notifications every single time that we post a new uh, episode here. It's really nice, right? What are you doing back here? And also, make sure and check us out on Apple iTunes podcast section. Uh, subscribe to us there. And uh, do you know we're also on Spotify? Yeah. There's nothing in there yet, but uh, that's okay. So... Check us out. If you really, really like what you're hearing here, then you want to head over to Patreon.com and you can actually contribute to the show and making this the awesome success that it clearly already is. And uh, throw a few bucks at us. You can earn some cool perks along the way. Visit Patreon.com slash Beyond the Tap today to check out more. And to some of my friends who, you know, bucks may not come so quickly to you. Feel free to subscribe to us. That's important to us as well. Or review us. Give us five stars. You think we're five stars? I think we're five stars. I think so. And that's just as important. So follow us. Stay tuned. There's a lot coming your way. True story. See you next time on Beyond the the Tap. Tap. Hey, uh, so welcome back to the second half of our episode of Beyond the Tap featuring Matt from Boston Mountain Brewing. Welcome back, man. Thanks a lot. Man, so uh, so we've we've gotten through two beers now. Uh, we had the golden ale, we had the Kolsch, and uh, we're getting ready to dive into the coconut porter. Uh, a little a little warmer, right, for uh, cooler temperatures now. Absolutely, and, uh, kind of a different notes to it. Tell us, uh, tell us what we're getting ready to jump into here with this beer. All right, so this is what I would call a strong porter. Um, again, I nerd out on the beer ridiculously amount, probably. So I went uh, when I got ready to brew this beer. I went back on the internet and I started searching around how porters and stouts came into being. Uh, discovered that there were several different styles of porter that came along before stout and that strong porter was one of those. So I decided to brew one of those. And then uh, coconut porter came from my partner, Sam, uh, and his visits back out to San Diego to visit his family. They're pretty big out there, I guess. And uh, so we started brewing. We probably got five or six batches in on this guy and uh, this is our best batch by far i think so far we got uh, coconut flakes and roasted them and put them in during the conditioning phase and uh, it's really turned out pretty nice in my opinion yeah no, it smells wonderful i'm, I'm telling you there so uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in here really quick all right yeah. um yeah get a taste That is really smooth. Okay, I really like that one. Yeah, I've, I've, like I said, I've had another uh, local brew that has uh, some uh, coconut in the name. We'll say right, and uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that one. Okay, and that's okay. Yep, um, absolutely, it's not for everybody. I get that, but uh, this one, this one's definitely for me. I'll tell you that. Awesome, good to hear it. So, is there anything that uh, was there a specific coconut porter that you guys uh, that you saw or drank one time and said hey i, I want to nail that one like I, I would i would like to come as close to that one as possible or was it really just hey here's the style here's the flavor i want to go for like you said let's let's research and make it as as perfect as it can be there's probably a specific porter that he had in mind if there was then he never told me exactly what it was okay um, in my early years, I did a job over in Hawaii, and I went to Kona Brewing, and I had a really good coconut porter over there that I really enjoyed, and that was kind of what I was personally going for with this one. Um, but other than that, I, I I was a cook for a long time when I was younger, in my 20s and 30s as well, and so uh, getting the flavor profiles into a beer like this is kind of a trial and error kind of thing that I tap back into my cooking history with and so i'm just trying to get the balance right basically yeah tell me a little bit more about that how did you you said cooking uh was that just more of a personal hobby or was that a profession or that was my profession for years and years i worked at a bunch of different restaurants some lodges and uh you know resorts and things like that so i that was 
kind of i thought i was going to be a chef for a while as well and then uh, i just i'm kind of a scattered guy i like picking up different hobbies and learning different things so hey i understand that i'm yeah. i'm in a similar boat i mean you know in my 30s here i'm already picking up a beer podcast right, right. so yeah. so then why switch to the brewing i mean what was it for was was it a direct switch from that from from the culinary side into brewing or were there steps in between there wasn't a whole lot of steps in between. I would say uh, I got back into school in 2010, started going, uh, you know, working on getting a degree. I started out in psychology and kind of wandered around and finally decided to land it on environmental science. And Okay. Was that here at U of A? Well, when I originally started, I was in Idaho and I did a little bit of out in California and then I ended up here at U of A my last two years. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, I just, I've always enjoyed science. I've always been kind of an amateur scientist, even when I was a kid. And I pick up on that kind of technical aspects pretty easily, I guess. And uh, it just bled into brewing beer really easily, really nicely. So, yeah. Yeah. And then how'd you meet uh, Sam? Sam, we were working together at the Walton Art Center. Okay. And uh, that's, so that's how we met and started. We both liked beer and that was one of the things that definitely drew us to each other and um, yeah, we just spend hours sitting at work talking about whatever, and it eventually just uh, led into, hey, you want to make beer? Sure, let's make beer. Hey, I understand. I mean, we had uh, we had some other guests on the show, Matt and Kyle, who met whenever uh, one of them was the, uh, I believe it was Matt was Kyle's, uh, was it uh, ophthalmology uh, imaging person? I can't remember what the, that specifically is called, but basically he was taking pictures of uh, Kyle's eyes. Uh, huh. at, a, at a visit one day, and uh, I think I got that story right. Right, Matt? All right. Um, we're going to roll with that, but basically they uh, they met through that profession, uh, that interaction there, and okay. just hit it off as, hey, let's launch out and do, uh, do our Apple brandy now, which is known as Making and Carson. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's weird how that kind of stuff happens. I mean, I was in grad school when we decided to do this, and I actually dropped out to open this business and that was something that i you know for years i thought i was gonna get a master's and a doctorate and teach at college and yeah now i'm brewing beer so yeah it's uh, i guess if that's what you're supposed to do that's what's gonna happen absolutely and yeah. and you know it seems like you got a really good passion for it especially you know if you're willing to go through the the water report uh, stuff and and really try to match that but i mean what's what would you say is one of your favorite parts of of brewing i mean what's what really is like kind of that home run hit for you that's just like, man, that, if there was nothing else but that one thing, that it would make it all worth it for me. I think because I am kind of a scattered guy and I like jumping from one project to another that I get kind of bored with one thing or another once it becomes repetitive. And with beer making, I can keep it fresh. I mean, building a recipe, anything from building the recipe all the way up to brewing the beer and seeing how it tastes when it finishes. Yeah. It's extremely satisfying and it keeps me engaged. So this is probably one of the first professions I've ever been in that I can see myself taking all the way to the yeah. you know, old age or whatever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's great. And I'm sure the second best thing is dogs, right? I mean, how, oh, yeah. how many dogs are attracted to you that's whenever right. yeah. you're on a podcast? And, uh -huh. Or yeah. at the brewery. We're dog friendly as well. So okay. we get plenty of that in there too. I was going to ask, I mean, do you guys, uh, yeah, do you allow dogs in there? Yeah, and we do. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I would imagine people probably bring that out. Do, do any people try to bring like exotic pets of any sort? Like any lizards or snakes no? Or we haven't like had any exotic. I think somebody brought a cat in a while back. That's that was interesting. A cat on a leash is always exciting to see. But uh, how'd that work out? It worked out well. I mean, it's crazy. You would never think that a cat would accept a leash, but this one was pretty calm about it. So no joke. There's a lady who uh, walked her cat around our apartment complex yeah. uh, almost daily on it's, a leash. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Does weird. not make sense to me. <laughs> I, I know, don't get right? it. But yeah. That's all right. So, um, so I know, yeah, we've, we've touched on that. Uh, man, I tell you what, we've, you've got a lot of different flavors. You've got a lot of different things here. I'm seeing there's a pumpkin ale down there. I'm seeing there's a coffee. Is this coffee stout? That's right. Okay. All right. Um, return to the coconut porter really quick. What's the ABV on this? This one is it's right there. 5%. 5% on that one. 
And then, so yeah, so I mean, what what is the strongest beer that you guys have brewed so far? Do you know? The nine and a half, that one down there, the middle fruit, huh? if I'm saying that correctly. The one we're getting ready to hit I in just a little bit. I do not speak German, but yeah, that's my strongest beer so far. The middle fruit, DIPA. Nine and a half percent. There we go. And we are going to hit that next because uh, one, the lid's off, and two, I got to taste what that one is like. Yeah, so. that's about as high as I can get with the mash ton I've got until I, I think it's called double concoctions and things like that. I can start getting into that and maybe get a little higher, but I haven't really experimented around with that yet. But with the 9.5%, it took so much grain that it was overflowing my mash ton, basically, or real close to it. Gotcha. So yeah. where does the uh, where does the name for that one come Or like, where does the inspiration for this one come from? Uh, that was you or a, Sam? That was me, and it was just a little experiment of mine. Uh, the middle fruit, it's a holler tau, and I hope I'm saying that as close as possible. They're German words, and I don't speak German, but uh, so those are noble hops that they usually put into a pilsner over in Germany or uh, Europe, and uh, I'd never seen one put into a double IPA personally. They probably have been, but uh, I decided to go for it and see what what I come up with, and I was really happy, and, and and it's gotten a pretty good reception. It's our highest rated beer on Untapped right now, actually. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's very cool. Now, do you guys? Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the bottling. We mentioned kegging, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, is there? You know, obviously, right now we're in the middle of pandemic craziness. But uh, what's what would you say is a good goal for you guys uh, one day? Is it to to stay right where you're at, or open a second location, or expand in in just grow to a bigger location or what's your thoughts? We've talked about all that kind of stuff. I think with the pandemic, we're kind of uh, leaning towards distribution on a larger scale, which is, excuse me, which is going to uh, require another location that we can set up uh, an extensive bottling line and that kind of thing. I need some more cold storage and, uh, but that's probably a year or so down the road, maybe more. We'll see how it goes. Um, we've talked about second locations as well. I have a buddy that wants me to open a brewery in Conway. I don't know if that's ever going to happen or not, but uh, I'm just kind of a day-to-day kind of guy. I just want to see how it goes. I'd like to see the pandemic get over and you know see what potential. You know, We never did realize our full potential at this location before it hit, so I don't know exactly what what I'm going to see once it's all over and everything opens back up. So, yeah, no, I agree. I think, I think it's going to be an interesting time. I think it's going to be something that none of us can really thoroughly predict, but I think that, uh, hopefully we're getting near to being done with this. Yeah. Uh, especially after flu season this year, we'll, we'll, we'll move past all of that and we'll start to see where everything settles. But, yep. um, going back really quick to influence and, and where, you know, you mentioned San Diego a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been out there. I definitely know like, uh, the different, the different breweries that are out there. I've got a friend of mine that, uh, he lives out there. And when I, you know, when I went to go visit him, there's gotta be, you know, two dozen breweries within like a two mile radius of his house. And, uh, you know, was there any brewery that specific in specific that, uh, really influenced you guys more than another or was it just kind of a a conglomeration of everybody i would say it was a conglomeration of everybody um one of our first batches that we ever did was an avery ipa clone so i remember that one being a pretty heavy heavy influence on uh sam in particular okay um i enjoyed the sculpin ipa that was out of uh what is the name of that brewery ballast point Okay. That was a big one for me. I also enjoy sweet water a lot. Um, so I like strong flavored beers myself. I like, and that's where a lot of my beer influence comes from, as you were talking about earlier with the flavorings and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, if I have a chocolate stout, I want it to taste like chocolate. I don't want hints here and there. I want it to taste like chocolate. Really Same, punch you in the mouth, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Something Good. like that. So that's kind of what I gear towards with my beer. So if you had a fallback beer right now, wow. like just something that wasn't yours, but if you're not drinking your own beer, uh, what beer are you drinking? Oh, I would say maybe... Uh, the one that's closest? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's about right. All right. Whichever one people will give me. I don't know. I have a buddy that drinks a lot of Stone, so the Tangerine Express is really good. Um but yeah, and and honestly, since I've started brewing beer, my beer consumption has dropped off quite a bit. I mean, I I taste it, and I you know, and I get a buzz just going through eight fermenters and tasting all the beer, and that's 
about as far as I go most of the time anymore. I, I go out occasionally. I went up to uh, Whistling Springs, shout out to them, um, up on the other side of uh, the Missouri line up there a couple weeks ago and checked them out, and they were really great. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do right now more than sit at home and drink beer. I like to get out, and because since I've opened the brewery, I haven't had a whole lot of time to uh, explore and see, and there's been several new breweries open since I opened that I still am yet to get, Hawk Moth and uh, Ivory Bill, Natural State. I still haven't made it to you guys, um, but I'm heading your way as soon as I possibly can. So Absolutely. Yeah. No, every single one you named has some phenomenal beers. I'm sure. Um, I've been to all of them. Which has also been a great thing and a, uh, a horrible thing because now I'm starting to hit all these all these breweries and I'm like, okay, now what's new on tap? And I've got to remember to go back to right. them. So yeah. I know uh, specifically, shout out to Ivory Bill because I know we haven't had them on the show yet, but it's it's been a labor of love trying to figure out when our schedules line up and everything. But um, I'll tell you what, their fruit beers that they have there are phenomenal. Oh, really? So if you get a chance, check those out. I know uh, one of the most recent ones I had, which has been months ago now, uh, was a peach beer that nice. they had. And it was just just incredible. So, okay. I mean, the, the, the local scene here, I know, tell me, you know, whenever you guys launched, how inviting was that for you? Do you guys, you know, are you able to just reach out to other brewers? Did you did you ask for help from other people as you were kind of coming along and finding your your stride or what? We were very low key when we first started. We didn't do a lot of advertising. We didn't talk to a whole lot of people. Um, but uh, when we did open, the reception was incredible. I mean, I had uh, Ben from Fossil Cove, Sean from Crisis. I had uh, the new, new at that time brewer for Core. Jamie came down and visited us. Um, and I'm sure I'm excluding or forgetting several others, but we uh, all the local breweries came by. At least the brewer or the owner came by to see us and see what we were all about and kind of offer their support. So it's extremely supportive of the community. You know, it's like we've discussed this, not me and you, but several other brewers, and uh, we don't, the competition isn't really there. It's yeah. not a big deal. It's not an More aggressive than, competition. No, I minus mean, a couple of locals that really feel like they've got something to prove. But I suppose there's those man, people out there, but you'll always have them. You will. That's okay. Yeah. But you're really, you're just building a, a tourism. Uh, you know, something for people to come in. The more better beer you've got, the better, because that's going to bring people from all around the country to, to sample your product, and yeah. that's more business for everybody. So, now, do you have any uh, any connections with like the Fayetteville Ale Trail? I know they've got their stuff going. I mean, are you part of that, or is that something that's on your list to do? Or we're on the website. Uh, my understanding is they haven't printed any new passports since the virus hit, so we're okay. still waiting to get into the passports. But we're on the website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know that. Yeah, that's a great tourism. Like you mentioned, all the the destination stuff and and the opportunity to bring more people in. Because really, when one brewery wins, everybody brand, everybody wins along the way. Because if you support each other, then it's going to come back around to you. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, the more business your your buddy down the street gets, the more you are typically. So yeah. as long as you're doing the right thing, producing absolutely. the right beer. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, man. I mean, it's a, it's it's been a great experience seeing how this local Northwest Arkansas community has, has circled around, especially during the harder times right now. And uh, I mean, you know, we, you've had different groups like Fox Trail that have put their uh, sanitizer to use, uh, you know, selling it to help support other local brewers. And um, there's there's been different, uh, just I guess, partnerships really that have come out of this, and and different support. Um, have have you seen? Have you been? involved in any of that stuff with the the, the you know, community support and and kind of partnering with anybody else or is it not a whole lot yet we've had a few people approach us about doing collaborations and things like that in fact i have a uh, good friend his name's will savage he was a home brewer here in uh, the northwest arkansas area and he just moved out to the seattle area and opened a brewery out there so we're talking about doing a collaboration but 
you know, we're still pretty new. And I would say half the time that we've been open, we've been dealing with this pandemic. So we haven't really had a chance to reach out or, yeah. or vice versa and make something happen. So, yeah. yeah. Now, is it just you and Sam or do you employ other people? It, there? It's just me and Sam right now. We had uh, a lot of bartenders uh, when we initially opened. I think we had five or six bartenders that were helping us out. But when the virus hit again, we just had to yeah. lay everybody off. So right now it's really just me over there right now just uh, bartending mm -hmm. and making it happen. Well, I look forward to uh, hearing that you guys are back fully staffed and, and ready to roll. Because you and me both, man. I'll it's tell you. It's definitely been an uphill climb since March, I would say. Yeah. 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 Now, I, um, you know, one thing I think uh, that uh, a lot of people do forget is is just the opportunity to, to sh show up and just buy, you know, you, you mentioned you, you bottle and everything. Yep. So show up and, you know, buy a six pack, take some home, take some and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, Christmas and everything coming up, that's a great opportunity to give some gifts right yeah absolutely Take mary home we bottle everything that we got <laughs> on tap and uh, everybody's been really happy the reviews we've gotten back are that the beer is just as good in the bottle as it is on tap so that's yeah. nice to hear well very cool yeah well tell me i mean you know we touched a little bit on you know you want to you want to grow and everything but uh if if people want to find your beer mm -hmm. what is the what's obviously the best places to come by and actually see you in person Right. Um, are there any other local areas, uh, places that are selling your, your beer? That's really, I think, the only place that we have anything out right now. Um, the Green Room down on West and Watson, I believe they still have a beer of ours on tap. Okay. But, and if uh, you don't, you need to have one. Come on. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I mean, if, you're, if your sales are up and you want to start uh, getting some beer on tap, let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've always got beer to sell, so. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Awesome, man. And if people want to find you, uh, you, you said you're lo located there at Township and Greg. Yep. Uh, for your tap room. But if uh, where do they follow you online? If they want to learn more about you, if they want to hear more about who you are and everything. It's uh, bostonmountainbrewing.com or not .com. It's just Boston Mountain Brewing on Facebook or Instagram, basically. We're still setting up a website. Um, the email is just my personal email, old Hotmail address, N-I-A-C-H-E-34, Hotmail. You can get me there as well. So Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, what if somebody comes up and says, hey, will you give me a tour of what you guys are doing here? You guys, you good for that? Yeah, I'm totally good with that. I mean, as long, uh, like I said, I've had to lay everybody off, so I'm bartending. As long as I got time to take you into the back, yeah, I'm, I'll am i take you into the back and show you what's up. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's very cool. I mean... It sounds like you guys have some really great things going on, and I can't look, you know, can't wait to see where you land once all this stuff is on and and we're back to normal yep. operations, and everything. Especially being in a college town, man. I mean, how how well has that helped your business uh, with a college? How how much of a percentage would you say your your business is of college? It's a small percentage, honestly. I don't really? think. Yeah, I would say somewhere maybe around 15 or 20 percent is that age demographic. I was looking at this on Yelp the other day. I think it was Yelp anyway. They do a, a like a analysis of the age groups and everything that hit on your sites. And uh, it was mostly like 30 and up, I would say, were our largest demographics. Well, very so, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, not that we don't cater to the younger crowd i mean you're they're always welcome and we do get quite a few regulars over there as well we're about to uh set up a uh one of the corners of our tap room we're going to turn into a video game lounge Ooh. i guess you could call it so yeah that'll be fun nice yeah no that sounds great i think i think it's really neat to see how different uh, different venues can create those spaces that that might put them you know make them stand out from other places other tap rooms other destinations so that's really good yeah we just uh you know we want to make it fun and give people something to do while they're there so that yeah. was our motivation i'm a big gamer too i enjoy games so i kind of naturally gravitate that direction now are you more like pc or are you console like, oh yeah pc all the way okay all yeah. right what's what's what are you playing right now uh let's see what am i playing right now i think i i've played civilization lately but uh, okay fallout's a big one of mine i like fallout all the whole franchise um role-playing games i was big in world of warcraft years ago i played that when it first came out for several years so. yeah yeah well very cool well matt thank you again so much uh i think we're our time's just about done here but uh right. i want to say thanks again so much for coming by and visiting man this has been it's been really cool to see uh really cool to hear from another local brewer 
And uh, man, I wish you all the best in everything that you guys are doing. And uh, if you guys at home are listening or watching this, uh, and if you're in the Northwest Arkansas area, be sure to stop by Boston Mountain Brewing here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I tell you, man, uh, this what's this last one that we're having here? That's this, my double IPA. I'm telling you, that's got a good punch to it. So you're going to want to check that out. You want to try it out and uh, take some home with you and uh, tell me how you, how you like it. All right. All right. Thanks so much again, and we will see you next time here on the next episode of Beyond the Tap. Y'all be safe.